The fields of Oromadonte are filled with country music fans here for a weekend of camping, drinking and live music. Boots and Hearts, an annual event a few hours north of Toronto, is the largest country music festival in Canada. And this year, there's a new name on the ticket that's got people talking. I didn't really think of him as a musician beforehand, yeah. yeah. I want to see Jack, basically. I want to see Jack up close. Jack Bauer, a.k.a. Kiefer Sutherland. Stumbled out of the Payless Lounge Fell to my knees, so I laid down The actor currently playing an American president on the TV series Designated Survivor. Uh, she would like to know why her husband was denied the Medal of Honor for his ultimate sacrifice and bravery during Operation Enduring Freedom. And remembered for his role as counter-terrorism agent Jack Bauer on 24. Damn it, I am telling you the truth. These days, Kiefer has taken on a different role, country music singer. Half of myself and the band, you have no idea how much this means to us. This is an incredibly special day. What's it like to be on stage? What goes through your head? A lot of adrenaline. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and it's no different here. First take for a five-page scene, you know, you can feel the adrenaline going and the excitement and the nerves and everything. And it's the same thing right before you walk on stage. Spoken like a serious actor who knows the pitfalls of stepping outside the box. We met up with Kiefer on the Toronto set of Designated Survivor. The stereotype of actors becoming musicians, mm -hmm. was that ever something that you were concerned about? Well, yeah, otherwise I would have done it 20 years ago. And I think it's an, un it's an unfair stereotype, but boy, do I get it. Did, did you expect eyes to roll when you made the transition from actor to music? Absolutely, my eyes rolled. His eyes may have rolled, but it didn't stop him from pursuing his passion for performing and writing music. In 2016, Kiefer released a country album called Down in a Hole, a deeply personal compilation about life, love, and loss. You've written about a lot of personal things. You mm -hmm. wrote about breakups, you wrote about alcohol, you, you wrote about the deep personal angst that you've experienced, why open yourself up to something that makes you perhaps a bit vulnerable? The songwriting for me uh, was cathartic. Uh, it's the closest thing I've ever had to a journal. Uh, I tend to hold on to things, and I found that as I would write about certain things, the baggage would kind of go away. Kiefer has spent the past year touring his album, traveling across North America and Europe, playing intimate gigs in bars and theaters. And while he may still get nervous playing on stage, at 51, Kiefer Sutherland is a seasoned performer. Born into an acting dynasty, he is the son of Donald Sutherland and Canadian actress Shirley Douglas. His parents separated when he was young. Kiefer and his twin sister Rachel lived with their mother in Toronto. It was a relatively ordinary life. He went to school and played hockey and soccer. But he had one extracurricular activity that was different from most kids his age. I'd grown up watching my mom in the theater since I was seven or eight years old. Uh, we would go from school to the theater, we would do our homework, she would perform, and then we'd go home. So I would see play after play after play. And I went to go see her in Virginia Woolf. And it was the first time I had seen my mom in a play where she wasn't my mom anymore. Somewhere between the first and second act, she became Martha. And it floored me. And I thought well, that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Inspired by his mother's work, Kiefer left home when he was a teenager to pursue an acting career of his own. He got his first role when he was just 16 years old. 
a quick cameo in Max Dugan Returns, a movie headlined by his famous father. What are you doing with $5,000 in cash? It was the halibut. A string of hits in the late 1980s soon followed, including Stand By Me. We're just here to take a couple of steelhead out of the river, and look what we found. And Young Guns, a Western with an ensemble cast of up-and-coming young actors known back then as the Brat Pack. You, you walk off a fast for a little thing, don't you? Come on, yeah, and I just... And I also hit it at the right time. The movie industry was changing. Uh, three years earlier, you had John Travolta in his early 30s playing a teenager in Greece. Two years later, you had Sean Penn and Tim Hutton uh, playing teenagers in Ordinary People, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. There weren't enough young actors to fill those roles. And so it was, that was a moment. It only lasted a few years, but young actors were really in demand. Soon, Kiefer was acting alongside some of the biggest stars in Hollywood, including Tom Cruise. He was given water and vitamin supplements, and I can assure you, at no time was his health in danger. And one of his most memorable roles, a medical student playing with death in the film Flatliners. Jesus Christ, I thought we were doctors, scientists. It was on the set of that 1990 film where Kiefer met and started dating Julia Roberts. Look, about last night. It's okay. Both young, famous stars, their relationship attracted a lot of interest and attention. But it didn't last, with Julia famously calling off the engagement just days before their wedding. A public breakup and Kiefer's first brush with being a tabloid target. We were two people, we were working together, we fell in love, we lived together for two years had big plans and, and they didn't go through. I mean, it's, I think it happens a lot more than maybe people think. But is it hard to have a personal relationship when you're such well, a public figure? I, I think, you know, it becomes a little more difficult when you start dating and living with arguably one of the most famous women in the world. It's not like we were stupid. We knew exactly what we both did for a living and what that was going to mean. Um, and that was a choice we made. A few years passed before Kiefer met someone else on a movie set who would change the course of his life. Not a pretty woman this time, but a cowboy named John English. We caught up with him at a roping competition in Wickenburg, Arizona. He just a regular guy. I mean, it wasn't ever. I mean, his, his movie status didn't, you know, it just wasn't there. I mean, he was just Kiefer. Back in 1994, Kiefer and John met on the set of The Cowboy Way. John was Kiefer's body double. And we were sent to Santa Fe, me and another guy to do, uh, basically give him some roping lessons so they could do the stunts themselves. And that's how we got to roping the dummy there together and we kind of got to going back and forth, giving each other a hard time. And I mean, one thing led to another and we wound up really good friends. Not long after filming The Cowboy Way, Kiefer decided he wanted to follow it. He left Hollywood in pursuit of a more simple life. I had a small farm in northern Montana, and I was running quarter horses, and I was just basically training them as ranch horses. Not your typical thing to do. No, but it's, uh, it was a really important time in my life, and it was an important time when my career was maybe not going as well mm -hmm. as one had hoped. And, and it's any career does that. It's, it's, it takes a long time to learn that and accept it and trust it. Uh, but it was a time when I needed to stop working for a little while. How, no. did, how did you come to get involved in the, the roping circuit? I just had a real natural affinity for it. I mean, I, I could pick up a rope and I just almost instinctually knew how to work with it. And I had some really great friends that were cowboys and we just kind of went off and did it. He was a guy that picked it up pretty fast and he was real, like, Keeper's one of them guys that's real dedicated. You know, you give him a little bit of time, he'll learn how to do it. You know, a lot of those guys would, would kind of ease around him and kind of say, well, there's the movie star and, and everything, you know. And then before you know it, he was just another team roper to those guys. They just really accepted him and he fit right in. John and Kiefer became roping partners and toured around the Western U.S. competing in small towns. They even won a championship together in Scottsdale, Arizona in 1998. And like true cowboys, they would end their day in a local watering hole. You know, we would usually wind up going to one of the bars and, you know, they had 
you know, live music and stuff. And he would get up on stage and usually wind up singing something with the band right there. So, you know, and he plays guitar real well. And I mean, I always knew he could sing. Yeah, he's not stage shy by no means, so. Country music told a story that had a beginning, a middle, a conflict, and an end. And I, that just moved me. And, and so I felt I could write like that. And so I started in my kind of mid-20s started writing that, that kind of music. Kiefer started an independent music label in 2002 called Ironworks. He signed smaller acts like American alternative rock band Lifehouse. But initially, Kiefer kept his pursuit of music behind the scenes. I've watched the incredible sacrifice that is made by musicians. It's endless. Um, so this idea that someone who has reached success as an actor and has some notoriety and is going to try and use that to kind of cut in line as a musician, I completely get that. Uh, I, and I respect that, actually. It didn't change the fact that at the age of kind of mid-40s, I had written a lot of stuff that I really liked. Um, and I was going to record it and put it out. And if no one liked it, no one liked it. You never sold me, only wanted to hold me, make everything feel all right. And so if I can write a song about the pain of a breakup or the joy of love, and someone out there hears that song and goes, oh man, I felt like that too. I think that's a really powerful thing. A father's legacy. I think he made some really, really important films. Leads to a family collaboration. He wanted to do a Western with his father. When W5 continues. In a moment, Kiefer Sutherland's roots in political history. You know, he was, I think, the greatest man I've ever known. We'll be right back. We got married August 14th, 2003, the day of the black end. It did force people to take notice of the simple things, like the stars. about those times when you think about the future, the bigger picture, like what you'll do, where you'll go, how you'll grow. That's why we are here, to build a retirement plan that fits you, prepares you, and changes with you, so you can make the most of all those wonderful changes. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. No need to wait to ensure your children's success. At Via Monde, anything is possible. Like for Maxim, possible adventurer in the aerospace industry. Nice. Lily, possible civil rights attorney. Remarkable. Action. Nathan, filmmaker and Lawrence journalist. Definitely possible. And Akram, possible renowned biochemist. Impressive. At a Via Monde French public school, tout est possible. Your Via Monde school is just a click away. so eager to jump on my coattails. Well, welcome aboard. Kiefer Sutherland, one of the few actors in Hollywood who's found equal success on the big and small screen. Uh, Where is my head? I do not know. Where is I was just ordered to plant the transponder. His current role, playing U.S. President Tom Kirkman on the TV show Designated Survivor, filmed at studios in Toronto. What do you want me to do, General? Declare war? We spoke to him on the set of the Oval Office. So how do you become the president? Well, I was very lucky. I was given a character who was kind of discovering it as, as he went. Uh, he didn't campaign to become president. He didn't want to be president. Tom Kirkman, an inexperienced low-level secretary, thrust into the role of president after a murderous attack that kills everyone above him. Secretary, you need to put the phone down. Mike, what the hell is going on? I said put the phone yeah. down. The character and myself are finding our way. Uh, 
to being the president. But Kiefer is still best known for his role in 24 as the man who protected presidents, the U.S. counterterrorism agent Jack Bauer. Who are you working for? I work for you! The nail-biting drama premiered in 2001 and ran for almost a decade, picking up big ratings and multiple awards along the way. This is the first Emmy win for Kiefer Sutherland. This experience that has been 24 has been nothing short of remarkable for me. Canadian John Cassar directed more than 50 episodes of 24. We actually designed the show around him because we designed it a little bit like theater. Every, every scene was designed from beginning to the end. So if he came into a room, grabbed the guy, punched him out, did, a, did an interrogation and then left the room, we shot that as one piece. So how did he become Jack Bauer? It was just something in Jack, I think, that, that, uh, that connected to Kiefer. Sometimes you just put on a character as an actor like a, an old shoe and it just fits really comfortably. Yes, I love that character because he had a really strong moral compass and, and was constantly put in positions that were just unwinnable. But while Kiefer's career was thriving on screen, off screen was a different story. His drinking was making headlines. He was arrested multiple times for drinking and driving, and in 2007, he spent 48 days in jail. What was it like to be in jail? Well, it's designed to make you not want to go back. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. You know, the truth is I made a really, really stupid mistake. One of his demons when he was working with you, the DUIs, and he spent some time in jail. Not a good time in his not life. Not a good time. How did that affect his work? Well, it's really interesting because he convinced the court not to stop the show, to actually wait uh, to, when we were in a break. And so we didn't, we, didn't, uh, we didn't really stop shooting at all, which for him was, was a big thing because he didn't want to put a, a lot of people out of work. Have you changed since then? I think so, yeah. I think, I mean, I think for all of us, I think our desire is to grow and to learn and to do things better. 24 success continued for eight seasons, with the series ending in 2010. A few years later, John Kassar and Kiefer reunited, this time on the set of a film John was directing called Forsaken, about a father and son's estranged relationship. You went looking for it. God is not responsible for the life you choose. I did not choose it! Kiefer starred alongside his father, the legendary actor Donald Sutherland. I gotta go. You're not going for another 10 years, are you? He wanted to do uh, a Western with his father. He wanted to work with his father. He wanted to give his father the chance to really flesh out a character. Right. Not be the sort of one act kind of, you know, guest star. When I look back on MASH, Kelly's Heroes, Don't Look Now, Fellini's Casanova, Bertolucci's 1900, his work was so incredibly diverse. I think he made some really, really important films, and I think he was a groundbreaking actor. Are you alike in any way? I think we look a lot alike. I'm, I'm considerably shorter. I think we both share a real passion for storytelling. What about the long shadow? Everybody talks about when you have famous parents. Can you live up to the image of your famous mm -hmm. parents? Did that ever concern you? No, and it's... And I've reflected on that. Both of my parents were ultimately really encouraging for the choices I made in not being, wanting to be an actor. For Kiefer, famous relatives go beyond mom and dad. His grandfather is the late Tommy Douglas, known to Canadians as the father of Medicare and the first leader of the federal NDP. You know, he was, I think, the greatest man I've ever known. He would take me into Parliament and we would sit in the upper deck and Stanley Knowles, who was an MP at the time and a very dear friend of my grandfather's, would sneak us hot dogs. And I really treasure those times. And while he's lived in many places since then, Kiefer still calls Canada home. What do you remember about growing up in Toronto? I do remember really clearly when my mom, my sister, and I moved up here. My mom had got me new hockey equipment, and it was quite late at night, and we were walking to the car, and the bag of equipment was so big that it took both of us to carry it. So she had one handle, and I had the other, and a man, I just remember as being very tall, came from behind and took the bag from both of us. And I went to grab him because I thought he was stealing it. And my mom put her hand on my chest and said, 
you're in Canada, it's all right. <laughs> and he was walking the bag to the car. Ah. Didn't even say a word. And he said, is this your car, ma'am? And he put the bag in the trunk of the car. And, and from that point on, I just knew that this place was different than anywhere else I'd been. So it's like coming home every time Absolutely. you're in Toronto. Absolutely. The Canadian National Exhibition, CNE, a sure sign for the people of Toronto that summer is coming to an end. And for Kiefer Sutherland, it's a homecoming. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you much for letting us play so long and staying up so late. Tomorrow morning, he'll be back in the Oval Office on the set of Designated Survivor. But tonight, he's just Kiefer Sutherland playing one more song. Out to in the black and blue.